I'm so excited to be here tonight. I think you all are too. Um, but I'm even more excited to introduce to you an incredible fashion designer who happens to be my go-to for dressing movie stars and whose new position as the creative director of women's wear for Brooks Brothers will have you running to shop. Let's give a warm welcome to Zach Posen. You're welcome. Good evening. Hi. Hi. So this is fun. <laughs> Very exciting. Thank you for coming this evening. You clearly have quite a bit going on based on that sizzle reel. Um, between the blended world of fashion and entertainment, I think you call it... I call it fashiontainment. Fashiontainment, mm. I'll go with that. I, I believe you have collaborations in the works with Mac, uh, uniforms for Delta. You're now the new creative director for Brooks Brothers. You have three clothing lines. I mean... TV show. TV show, Cooking with Zach. If you don't follow his Instagram account, you should. Um, you have so much going on. Busy, busy. So exciting. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your, your new collection. The reviews have been fantastic. And from what I've seen, I cannot wait to go scoop up all those dresses and blazers. <laughs> you know, with Brooks Brothers came to me about three years ago. And I thought, you know, what an incredible opportunity to work with such an iconic American brand and something that was rooted in American sportswear. And, um, you know, how to kind of reintroduce the classics, but at a, you know, at a fair price point with the highest quality fabrication possible and deliver that globally as a look, you know, so a very pared down look. Yeah. Um, and an opportunity for me to work in sportswear because that's not what I do in my own line, but it doesn't mean that I don't think that an understated utilitarian look is incredibly elegant. So how are you bringing your own aesthetic to this approach to a well, heritage brand. Sure. Well, we started from the inside out mm -hmm. in construction of tailoring. And we started uh, with the inner construction of the breastplate of a suit and the shoulder pad. That was at least the first month of work there uh, and how to rebalance and bring a new fit of attitude to their classic blue button, gold button, Ja their blue jacket with the gold button, their khakis. The tailoring. Their, you know, their cotton shirting, yeah. novelty, how do we update just the basic classics, the camel coat, uh, and then give it a new energy and a new look. And we started collecting kind of image boards of, you know, very chic and cool, elegant women of American style. And that's where it came from there. And now we've been, you know, we've designed collections that flow into the store globally monthly. Wow. Uh, and we introduced novelty prints. You know, when I got there, for example, we had been working, they had been working in prints that they would find. And for me, it was essential. Like at Brooks Brothers, we have a men's tie business. So I said, well, then we really need to up our game for the women's scarf business. <laughs> and, you know, I said, everything that is, we have to have kind of an equal playing ground. If you want to make women important with such a brand that has such deep heritage in menswear and men's symbolism over the years, you know, we have to bring all those elements that we provide to men to, to women to, right. to get them in. And, you know, how do you keep the existing customer? How do you bring in a new customer at the same time? That's the trick with, with building that. That's exciting. That. Very exciting, working on the advertising imagery, um, you know, thinking about how we work with social media. Uh, our first collection that is in stores now, we didn't present. There's a whole idea in fashion right now uh, about consumers buying what they see at the moment, that we're all oversaturated now by what we see and then the consumer can't have it immediately. Well, we, that's how we kicked off the collection. Very cool. What you see now on, on social media or online in images is available now. That's so great. So the range And we put them back on a fashion schedule. Oh, So it was fantastic. a two-fold thing. It was, it, was, it was buy now, see now, 
or see now, buy now, and then also getting it onto a fashion schedule and presenting it during fashion weeks. So you're going to have your show and the Brooks Brothers show. Uh huh. It's a lot to look forward to. We'll be doing images of our secondary line. Last season we did a, a show with Google with our secondary right. line, and, and you know the finale dress yes. very well. <laughs> That, that you placed on Lupita. The light-up dress that light we actually up. saw in the video, guys. Pretty um, cool. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, you know, in reflect, it was great to do that, and that was an adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, this season, two shows is, is good for me. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I have amazing teams in each place, and, and that's, I think, been my transition over the last year and a half is learning how to be a creative and business leader. And you do that by trust, good delegation, mm -hmm. and knowing when in a process your hand and eye needs to come into the process. Absolutely. And that, that's key. Yeah. And, and nurturing your team. I mean, it is a family at each place, and, and it's important for them to become uh, comfortable in the process and keep them fun and light and, and it's still serious and you know a fitting with me is quite something i've been in a few they're fast they're fast <laughs> i mean in brooks brothers you know we do it in like two days for a season <laughs> and everything is prepared for that and then you know i get in there and you know with a lot of restraint because there's moments with basics and classics where you know you want to add but actually it, it's it's the discipline of simplicity there right so how many um, different items are in the women's collection this season? Is a it lot. skirts, tops, blouses, Everything. Coats? Jewelry, shirts, tops, scarves, oh hats. It's going to uh, be a field day. Gloves. <laughs> uh, shoes. What else am I missing? Bags. Brooks Brothers. I can't remember. Bags, of course. Yeah. Yeah, accessories. Yeah. Shoes, hats, bags, jewelry. I loved all the dresses I saw. Shirts, jackets, coating, knitwear. Outer. I mean, it's a full... It's a full lifestyle. It's the, the Brooks lifestyle. So everyone needs to it's go out and check up, it it's out. It's put together. It can be dressed up. It yep. can be dressed down. But it's, it's very fun to be working with separates. Very cool. Mm -hmm. What's the difference working with a heritage brand that's been around for 200 some odd years versus your line? I well, I have the freedom with my line to, to guide it. Mm. I mean, even though you create signatures and, you know, to grow a healthy business, you need to always have those signatures. So I'm, I'm kind of building my heritage. Yeah. And with Brooks Brothers, when I got there, you know, for me, all the heritage was there. You know, it just hadn't been brought to the customer in a fresh light with a facelift, with, you know, a good, a few nip and tucks in the right places. <laughs> uh, it's also nice to work with a brand that, uh, I mean, I've learned a lot, and I think Brooks Brothers has actually become very influential to, to my work. There's a new sense of ease in my work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're not, I think now I've established that, you know, we do things that are body conscious and women loving very well, but it's nice also to have a sense of ease and fluidity mm -hmm. and off the body. I mean, it's something that I, I look to at the right moment for that to really enter into the red carpet dressing and separates, <laughs> right. I hope. Right. I mean, we know that people have a visceral reaction to like a form of the body and, and these kind of symbols of the red carpet or of high fashion, but it's nice to, to change it up. And that's Absolutely. been influential. I mean, there was a lot more cotton shirting and play on that in my collection versus Brooks Brothers. Right. But, you know, put together, you know, there were, there were codes of preppiness at Brooks Brothers. And I mean, I grew up two blocks from here or a block and a half from here. So that's not really part of my heritage. Um, and, you know, I like the put together look of that. I was moving it away from cultural kind of connotations that had to do with preppy like prep school and elitism elements to that, I wasn't that interested right. in, and I don't think it's that relevant today. I think right. we're in an age of self-creation, and you can create the kind of uniforms for that. So who is the Brooks Brothers There's, woman? There is no one. It's, it's the American woman. Good answer. <laughs> and who's the Zach Posen woman? Well, Zach Posen woman is a creative woman, and she is a 
definitely theatrical uh, in her being, and uh, she definitely uh, is somebody that is strong, intelligent, and powerful. And and I and beyond that, I don't. De I never define it by age, race, body type, color of skin. And I think that's been part of my success as a brand. Is I I, I try to create something about a, a state of mental being more than uh, you know an age or or a body type. That's great. I, I you know I think the work we've done on the red carpet over over a decade is representing different fabulous strong iconic women. Women, yeah. And girls too, both. So if you had to choose one favorite piece out of the collection, what would it be? I have my favorite. That's really hard. The collection that's in stores now, wow. I want that red dress. You want the red shirt mm -hmm. dress is great. It's really good. Yeah, that the, Belted. The, yep, all summer. Great. Yeah, that's a staple. I'll live in it. I think that, I think our blue button blazer, which is not in the lookbook, but is in the stores, is, is really good. Um, if there's one item, wow. Yeah, I think that, that's pretty classic. I think that and, and, and the white shirt is a staple item. Mm -hmm. I don't know, my assistant's here wearing a really good outfit. Where's Ava? Model, please. Ava, I'm brain Ava. pulling you out. Yeah, that's a great suit. Come uh, here. Come on, come on, come on. Up here. Welcome Ava to the stage, please. <laughs> yeah, Ava stage. So we picked this out yesterday. That is so chic. Really, you know. Tighten my waistband. Yeah, but... tighten your waistband. But you know, this was you know, a take or an update on a classic suit. Tailoring is a tie waist, nice bootleg, bootleg pant. The lining's really fun. You can move your hair back. Thank you. Look at the color. I yeah, love good that. Good color. Color yeah. is important. Yeah. Anyhow, tailoring. Thank you, Ava. <laughs> Thank you, Ava. I love that. Beautiful take yeah. on. Yeah, just on you know, a, a take on on tailoring. Yeah. I mean, that's that's more of a fashion take on tailoring, but but still approachable and everyday. Absolutely, yeah. and professional, yeah. and something you can wear out. I mean, I think that transitional type of dressing lends itself yeah. very well for Brooks Brothers. I would even break it up and wear the blazer with you know yeah. different pan. Or, absolutely, yeah. I'm interested in how people will interpret the pieces into their right. wardrobe. Versatility. Abs it's key. That's the modern woman. You bet. <laughs> so, um, well, speaking of modernity and technology, we're in the Apple Store. Mm -hmm. Are you excited for the Met Ball? For everyone who doesn't know, the Met Ball is coming up in May, and the theme this year is fashion in the age of technology. I'm scared. <laughs> I, I have to say I'm really terrified. We will see a lot of interesting... For what this is going to look like. <laughs> um, I, 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 uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm very interested in fashion and technology. Uh, you know, I've explored digital printing. Uh, Light up I've dresses. thought about printing ball gowns. Mm -hmm. I've worked on it. <laughs> uh, you know, and we'll see if that comes to fruition. But, you know, and, uh, you know, I think it can be done for effect and for fun. And we'll see. I mean, there's so many ways that that can be achieved. Absolutely. I mean, I just think you're going to see, like, a lot of LED lights. <laughs> And you did it first, though. <laughs> we did LED lights. Yeah, I mean, Courage did it. You know, there are many people that, yes. Um, but, you know, I'm a very excited. I'm really interested to see how it gets incorporated into the exhibition. I mean, some yeah. of the best technology moments that I've seen in fashion, I think Hussein Shalayan did some really great work with technology. Yeah. And then I think there's hidden technology. Totally. I mean, there's definitely pattern cutting that you can do, you know, on wireframe or on CAD and, yeah. Textile, all and of that. And for sure, I mean, digital printing, yeah. you know, for me is not, at least in my mind, I guess it's a modern technology today. It's not that new. I, I want to see, like, what's going to surprise me in being new. I mean, you can work uh, with liquid crystals and, and weave that into fabric and have it go from, you know, opaque to transparent. I mean, I just want to see something that's going to blow my mind. Not from effect, but from the use of technology. And, and where it really feels functional and beauty and not like a Mardi Gras parade. Yeah. <laughs> or we'll like the electric, I mean, see. I love the electric light Disney parade. Or that. <laughs> that's, you know, I don't know. It's going to be in a play in between there and, you know, lots of battery packs. 
But I think it's very exciting. I, I, I love too. the Met Ball. I was an intern in the Costume Institute oh, wow. growing up, and, and you know that was really my history, part of my history of education of fashion was there. It's obviously evolved into you know a much bigger Met Ball now. Yeah, wow. Than, what an when education. I would buy my staff ticket when I was a kid there for, for sixty dollars, which was a lot and right. big deal and you know uh, you know, we weren't allowed obviously into the ballpark, but there used to be an after party. And I wish they would bring that back. Sign me up. They incorporated a lot more people at you know, it wasn't the big ticket price. Right. <laughs> So with all of this, and on top of all of the other projects I mentioned earlier that you have going on, uh, how do you find time for all of this? Good scheduling. Thank you, Ava. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, as I said, I work with a great team. It's challenging. There's no mm -hmm. question. Um, you know, I'm, I push myself to full limit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's kind of my reality today I, I don't really have you know it's kind of piecing together all the parts to make the whole thing work uh, we are you know as a company you know I have to look at it as the creative vision and, and then guide it from a business standpoint as well and I think today we're living at a time of diversification and it's important your kind of your brand power is built by how many people you actually reach uh, and you have to be the face of your company today. It has, companies have to have a face and they have to have a personal connection uh, to that creator. And the time of the reclusive artist is not there anymore. No. And you can romanticize it, and I, I of course I do. Uh, and I, I find that moment for myself in my private time on weekends when I go into my office and drape. Yeah. And I'm alone, and it's cold, and my music's playing, and, and that's my time right. to kind of absorb what's happening in my collection. I mean, all of it, in a way, is a kind of preservation for my process, which involves working with very high-level craftspeople in New York City, people I've kind of collected or found me over many years, and it's very artisanal, and we make everything on premise. I've been to the atelier. It's phenomenal. Thank you. Um, and you know, that has a great expense to it as well. And you know, you do what you do to support that and to keep tradition and craft and invention alive. And that's what makes our product special. I, you know, I'm in there working with them every day. And you know, I have to make, how do I have the time? I make decisions and I stick to them. And I collaborate with each different part of the different disciplines of, of the different companies I work with. And, you know, being a good collaborator. Collaboration is key. Absolutely. So what's next for you? What is next for me? You just lost, Snapchat? Uh, launched, launched e -com, right? We're so launching e-commerce. Ah. Yes, we are launching our e-commerce on our own website in the next few weeks. Wow. Right around our fashion show. Thank you. I waited a long time. <laughs> Uh, I think I made the right decision. I'm excited. You know, it was a choice to sort of build an e-commerce world instead of building hard shop retail. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't really ever want to open a store if it was just going to be an advertisement. Right. Uh, you know, I think at this stage, it's, it's about building something. Making it accessible. Making it accessible, and that I'll have my secondary line, Zach Zach Posen, our sunglasses for men and women. We'll have links to our bridal jewelry, our bridal line, um, our bags for Zach Zach Posen, and then collection as well. Fantastic. Shop the runway. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm very excited. I, I, I like direct to consumer. And I like partnering with my retailers too, but it, it's different. You get. Yeah. I mean, with Brooks Brothers, what's been amazing is we're a vertical store. And with a vertical store, you get immediate feedback. And everyone can go and shop right away. You can. <laughs> I think we ship everywhere. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, well, what we're, we're going to take a few questions from the audience. Hi. <laughs> my name is Michael. And I, first and foremost, I want to say you are my idol. You are the reason why I want to start designing or started designing. 
Um, but I'm 17 going on 18, and so I'm applying to colleges, and I know you went to Parsons. So I wanted to know, like, what was that experience for you, and how did you like it, and any memorable moments, you know. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> so I went to Parsons for a pre-college course, so I didn't go to full university at the new school. Um, but my experience at Parsons was an interesting experience. Um, it was really the first time I had been in the city for like a whole summer alone and kind of feeling semi-independent. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it created a great template for fashion industry. Uh, my dad is an artist, and I remember there were these rules about how to sketch a body in fashion, and it was 10 heads tall, and it was all these formulas of like shading and contour, and it drove him berserko. He said, like, I cannot wait for you to lose all of this. Uh, I think it's I think it's an incredible school, an incredible experience. Um, you know, I would say that if you want to work in fashion and be a designer, you need to start making everything you're wearing every single day. I mean, I, you have to go home from here, roll the fabric out, cut, and get out whatever sewing machine you have, and start creating. Start giving it to your girlfriends. Start getting that experience back and forth. That, that's my most, but the most important advice is start playing and experimenting. Get off Pinterest. Like it's great to see the collections, but you really need to find your own voice and you must, must know your fashion history. I'm like so surprised sometimes with young people that have gone through school and, and don't have an understanding of the history, what clothing meant, why it was happening in fashion. I think like go in depth into that. Um, what else do I think is really, yeah, I think making your clothing, knowing your history, and then trying when you are in school to get as much work experience as you can in a place that is gonna bring something to your world. Uh, and it can also be just being in a work environment. I mean, just being in a work environment and seeing how something goes together is, is powerful. You're not always going to be sketching. You're not going to be hands-on all the time, but you absorb it. And, and that every experience you have builds, builds who you are. Yeah. Hello. Hi. I'm uh, Helen Yaloff. Um, are you also considering designs for non-standard fashion shapes, such as uh, Zoftic people, or plus sizes, or pear shapes, or top heavy? Well, in Brooks Brothers, we have quite a, we have a very broad size range. Um, you know, I th we have two things at Brooks Brothers. One thing with Brooks Brothers, with my own collection, we can custom make anything. I don't, um, so that, that's very important to me. Obviously, that's a huge expense. When you custom make a piece, that's its own piece. Up until now, off the rack with my own brand has been dictated by retail. I can't, unless I'm going to foot the bill of what goes into a store, they control what gets bought. And I, you know, I think sometimes it can be very problematic. With Brooks Brothers, we have a quite, you know, we have size range. We have the ability to make anything, and we have the ability to do custom at Brooks Brothers. Uh, in terms of, you know, different body types with a full price purchase, if it's not on sale, your alterations are free, and I think that can work for different body types. Uh, with my Davis Bridal line, we go up to size 32. Those are wedding gowns. Um, so, you know, as I grow my business, I hope to be able to provide the work I do for many different body types. It's, it, it's right now, you know, with our own line, it's the confines of what the stores buy, and I can't control that. Um, and with Brooks Brothers, we have the, the ability to address, you know, a much wider audience because of price point and because of production capabilities but I don't um, believe in one ideal body type. 
Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to say it's very good to see you again. I met you at Saks and Bala Kenwood, and now I work for Saks, so it's good to see you again. My question to you is, um, I attend LIM mm -hmm. College. Um, I just transferred here. What advice can you give to a student to get their feet wet in fashion? My major is fashion merchandise. I'm trying to get out there, trying to see what's going on. So what advice can you give to a new girl in New York? New York okay, walk. Walk the street, walk the streets, walk the stores. I mean, I, I, I don't do it now, but I've gone through periods of time where I do every department store every weekend. I do Madison Avenue, I do Fifth Avenue every weekend, every store. And that's how you feel and see what's moving and what's in trend. I mean, I think that's key. And then in between that, I would go to museums. I mean, museums should be your weekend. Uh, you know, it's all about self-nurturement of your mind, you know, and if your mind is healthy, I, I believe, you know, often body follow, like it's just immerse yourself in whatever culture you can get your hands on in the most incredible city in the world, like go for it and, and read voraciously and challenge yourself in that way, you know, like you gotta, wherever you're gonna take that career in merchandising, you know, do it and play, you know, in the stores. I mean, I know they probably don't want to hear that it's at Saks, but, you know, you see a customer, you should play. You should, you know, and you should ask to get whatever kind of selling information you can see. That's what I would do. And follow people in stores. I don't know, sit in Manolo Blahnik. <laughs> that's what the, I mean, that's what I did as a teenager growing up in New York to understand, you know, I didn't understand above 42nd Street. That was like no man's land uptown. <laughs> And um, like sit in a luxury, if you want to be in fashion, high luxury, like just sit there, watch how women shop. That's like, you know, different ages, different women and that they're nice in that store. And they're some of the best sellers in the city. Thank you. Yep. Thank Hi, you. my name is Jarvis. Hi Jarvis. Jarvis? Yeah. Yeah. So my question is what, what inspires you? What motivates you and you know, where do you go for, like, to believe in yourself and in your work? Wow, that's a good question. Really good question. What do I do to go to believe in myself and my work? Um, you know, you, you, you're, you're, when you're creating, you're, you're bringing a lot of vulnerability out there. And I think you have to surround yourself with very good friends and real friends. I mean, I think friends, family food, and then fashion. Um, I think you gotta play and trust. Step away. Give yourself, when you're working, if you're a creator, there's a really important place before you show anybody else for you to give yourself distance and have that perspective. And it will, something will change. Take a photo of it, because you don't want to like go back and totally rebuild it. But get, give yourself your perspective on your work Trust it, refine it, make it feel like it's a true vision of yours, that it's not referential. There's too much clothing in the world. That's just, there's too much, you know, so there's too much clothing in the world. So it has to be a really unique voice in some way. Form, color, texture, con construction, shape, whatever it's gonna be. You know, we're, we're living in a time when you can kind of control and dictate your vision and, and be able to put it out there to create that response. I mean, there's a lot of negativity in this world that is way unnecessary. It's self-destructive to us as, as, as a global humanity. And I think, you know, bring out positivity, like that's gonna bring good to your work. What you put out there really comes to, to back to you. It doesn't mean you gotta like everybody, like everything, but that's, you don't need to put that out there. So, I, I mean, I think that kind of energy, without sounding, you know, too kooky, is really reciprocal. Um, and you just really have to trust in it and put it out there. That, that's key. You know, it is a risk. But there's something empowering about taking a risk. And, and that's what you need to remember. And what keeps you driven? I, I'm driven by uh, the people I work with. I'm really, like, by... You know, I've had times when it has not worked with the people I work with, you know, and why, and I've had, you know, and uh, 
you know, when you, you know, you have to really assess and, and, and appreciate it and know how special that is. And it's like fine tuning. It's like instrument making. You know, it's sound, it's form, you know, and it's always changing. And you're in a race against time, you know, and you just have to do your best. The, so, uh, well, hello, <laughs> first of all, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for all the beauty that you create in your closing. I really appreciate it because I believe that beauty can save the world. And uh, my, sec my question is about, well, first of all, I go to Columbia University. I'm studying architecture, but uh, I came originally from a Central Asian state, which is Kazakhstan, and it's close to Russia. Yeah. And I know a lot of friends who are really impressed by your creativity and uh, by your talent in closing. So I have a question. Do you plan to open any store there? Maybe? Uh, in Kazakhstan? Yeah. Well, we sell there. I sell my collection there. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Like an official store? or Not my own. I don't have any of my own hard stores. Like Brooks Very Brothers? Oh, Brooks Brothers? I don't, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we're opening a Brooks Brothers store there right now. But, and in Russia as well. I mean, I think we're always exploring new territories and the right opportunities. Um, you know, that, that, at, that, at this moment, if there's enough demand, yeah. then that gets to the top in a company. I, I don't control yet where the stores get open. I think it was a private, like, pr maybe a private order, right? Or no, 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 I think there's a retailer for my collection there, oh. I believe. Okay. And, you know, e-com for sure, I mean, that's, always, that's a long way to ship. Yeah. But, That's true. but, you know, I also, it will happen. I'm not in a rush. There were times when I'd feel that pressure of that rush, and I'm not in that rush anymore. Um, and because our pieces are so, our collection pieces are so artisanal, to me, the one thing that defines luxury today, since everything is accessible, is rarity. Hi, Hi Zach. Hello. Um, I'm Luke Duchar. I'm from Maine, mm -hmm. and I am a first year at Parsons. My question is, I, uh, I know it's a hard business, and for a young designer with not a lot of money, how would you handle getting into the fashion industry um, and starting your own line at such like a little name, you know what I mean? And, becoming something so great, such as yourself? Well, there's no formula. Well, yeah, that. Of course. There's no of formula course. in fashion. Everybody's, I would say, get as much experience as possible. I, I don't live with regrets. I do wish that there are moments that I, I don't, I wish there were moments of places like I wanted to work when I was young, that I had just like figured out another way around to go there. Um, but I think create something small as a collection. I mean, you don't want to make, you don't want to destroy it all in one go, right? So you want to create a capsule collection. That, that's how I started. You know, it was 10 styles. You know, I made the samples. My sister made a sample. I had one sewer who would come, um, you know, after hours. You know, focus on something, a mini story like a haiku of a collection. And then you have to get it seen. Well, today we have social media. And how do you, you can make your own film and own video. And you have to start kind of, it's like guerrilla. It's guerrilla marketing. You have to use it that way to get it out there. Get friends of yours to wear it out. I mean, you're young. I'm sure you have friends that go out that are there and go to nightclubs. Have them wear it when they have something, a special one. Have them wear it. It's all about word of mouth, you know, and, and that. And then that person sees it, and then that person has a friend who works in a buying office. You know, it all starts in this way. You know, nobody swings open the door, you know, and invites you in. I mean, the, love, the years of Reland picking people off the street and bringing them in does... We don't have that right now. We will. I'm sure it's going to exist at some point again. Um, 
but as I said, rarity is the definition of luxury today and makes people think things are special. So if you have this small collection, well, that has something special to it. But it takes time. It's going to take a few seasons of that. Make, you know, 10 pieces, you know, and you should have them diversified. I don't know what your specialty is. I don't know what, what that is yet. But, you know, present it well, present it edited, a focused message. Make sure you align with the clothing you make. I think that's a big mistake that I see young designers doing. Like, you need to look and live and breathe their brand. Hi. Hi, I'm Sophia, and I wanted to know how you started your career, like how you started it. Okay. How I started it, started it. Well, I started drawing and sketching fashion, and believe it or not, before all these stores were in this neighborhood, most of these buildings were factories making clothing. And I would walk my dog with my dad that I got when I was six. And there were little fab, there were rolls of the excess cutting. Like they would cut all the pieces of the clothing. And so I had all my figurines and those would be my play tools. So I had all these little scraps and excesses of fabric and I would pin it on to the figurines and that's kind of how it started. And I was sketching. I mean, I always had a sketch pad in my hand. And, you know, from there, then I first sewed, I went to, I had a sewing class where I sewed an apron. And then I helped my sister make a tie skirt. Very Brooks Brothers. <laughs> could be a good Brooks Brothers next Christmas. We could do the tie competition. You know, it's very easy because it's just, the tie contours itself because most ties go narrow and, and because they go wider, it adds like a flare to the shape and you can mix match and it's very like ragdoll in a good way. I think that's, so that, that's, you know, where I started sewing and um, I always was using my hands. I mean, I made it through grade school by not being able to do the good essay at that point. Now I write a good essay. But then... Um, you know, I couldn't, I got through school through visual projects and I was pretty fortunate to have parents that supported that. And, um, then at a flea market, I got a serger, a marrow machine, you know, where it zips and cuts it. It was like the second model. It looked like uh, Frankenstein with all weird oil vessels. And then that was in like high school. And then that was fun because, you know, it just sewed it all together and cut the edge and you could really... You know, you could almost use it as an embroidery. Um, be careful on a sewing machine. I think learn how to, you know, do your hand stitches first. Like, but anyhow, I think make the clothing for yourself and your friends. I think that's what it takes, and then you learn from there, and it starts to develop your own voice. You know, I got to high school, and I had all these incredible, inspirational women and girls around me that I was going to school with and it kind of blew my mind. They were working in fashion, they were some of them were big models at the time and you know I was just in awe. You know I'd never, it was New York City so it definitely, it was in Brooklyn but it still had I guess like a, you know, the kids were dressing up and uh, it was very inspiring and I was making them clothing. That's how it started. And then, and then I got an internship, which is not, the internship I got is not allowed anymore because you have to have like college credit. And I was in high school and I went to a place called Nicole Miller, a designer, and uh, I would sketch. I, I would sketch over their croquis, you know, which was very long, and I would pile the sketches on her desk every day and she would review them with me. And they had a cutting room and so after work in the hours, I'd like pick a fabric at lunchtime and then make my girlfriends like an even nicer finished dress. And then from there, you know, it evolved and you enter into the, you know, 7th Avenue, the garment district. And, and then I escaped it and went to England and then ended up back here. Yeah. So that, that's, I, you know, I think just go for it. I don't, you know, fabric is something pliable, it's malleable, you don't even need to sew it, you can tie it. You can staple it, you can glue it. My dad shortens all his pants with glue gun, <laughs> still. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever tools you need to express something you're feeling. 
And I think it's important to become versatile in those tools, to be free in them. I think that's what is important about being a great creator. And the more you do, the closer you'll get to finding who you are and what your voice is. Words of wisdom from Zach Posen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.